Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Honest Living Podcast with me, your host, Emily Morello. On today's podcast, I'm so excited to announce that I have Rari Fairbairns from One Year No Beer as my guest. Rari is someone that I've been wanting to interview since before I even started my podcast because I think what he's doing and his business is absolutely incredible. I heard about One Year No Beer when I was a senior in high school, or not high school, in college, and I remember I was just cooking dinner and I was listening to Zestology, which is a British podcast about health and vitality and wellness, and the podcast host talked about how you can change your life being alcohol-free. And I was really interested in this because I knew I didn't have the best relationship with alcohol and it was something that I knew caused a lot of anxiety for me and a lot of worry. So immediately it sparked my interest. And then once I started listening to the podcast, I was hooked. It was absolutely incredible and I really wanted to start the challenge immediately, but because I was going into my senior year, or I was in my senior year of college, I didn't think that I should, and I didn't have the confidence to actually go forward with it. So fast forward to last May, right before I moved to Atlanta, Georgia with my boyfriend, I went out with my friends when I was living in Tampa, and I was driving back to Tampa, and I had a lot of anxiety. I felt really bad physically, mentally, and I was like, oh my god, I just need to take a break from alcohol again. Then I was listening to another podcast, and I can't remember which one right now, but One Year No Beer was on this podcast as well, and it was right when I really, really needed to hear this. So immediately that night when I got home, I signed up for the 90-day alcohol-free program and started it about three weeks later. The cool thing about this program is you can reset the start start date as many times as you want within a year. Um, so I've actually restarted it two or three times. I think actually three times. And I've learned a lot from each time I've restarted it. So I originally started it in May, right when I moved to Atlanta, and then I lasted about 43 days, and then it was my anniversary with my boyfriend, then it was his birthday, then we had a wedding, so I didn't follow through with it, and then I started again in August for like a week, and I decided not to do it because I was too busy going out and drinking, and then I moved, when I was about to move to Charlotte, which was in January, I decided I wanted to start this whole year alcohol-free. So January 1st, I didn't drink any alcohol, lasted 45 days, we moved to Charlotte, had people over for the first time, and then I ended up drinking. So I um, ended up ruining the challenge, not ruining it, but I didn't last the full 90 days and I restarted and then now I'm here recording this intro. It is day 57 and when I recorded this with Rari, it was day 55, 54, I forget which what, what day it was exactly, but you'll hear it in the episode and I only drank one day this entire year, which to me is pretty incredible. It's been like a hundred some days and I've only had one night of drinking. So, I feel amazing physically, mentally. I didn't really talk about that much in this episode, but overall, I feel incredible. My skin's been better than it's ever been. I've been sleeping better than I ever have. I've had more energy than I've ever had. I have been less anxious. I mean, I've still been anxious at times, but less than I normally am. I've saved a lot more money. I could go on and on and on. Um, My stomach's been better. As you know, I've had stomach problems. It's been way better, only bloating a couple days a week at the most. And yeah, so it's just been an amazing journey. I'm not saying I'll never drink again. That's not the intention. I want to heal my relationship with alcohol and be able to drink without binging every weekend when I go out with friends and just feel more confident in my decision not to drink and not feel like I have to just to fit in. So, 
If this is something that you are interested in doing, if you think that you need a break from alcohol, if you want to dive a little bit deeper in your relationship and how to make it a little bit better with alcohol, or if you just want to quit altogether, this podcast is for you. And then please, after this podcast, go on to oneyearnobeer.com and or on in their Instagram, One Year No Beer, on their Facebook, and look at all the amazing resources that they have for you. I promise this will change your life, whether you do the 28-day challenge, the 90-day challenge, the 365-day challenge, it is remarkable. So I don't want to keep talking. I've already been on here long enough. Let's just get right into the episode. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Honest Living Podcast, where we learn to be ourselves while serving our higher purpose. I'm your host, Emily Morello. I'm a full-time sales engineer and a part-time health and wellness enthusiast. You probably already know this if you follow my blog, Life Hacks with Emmy Mo, but this podcast will be an additional tool to help you live your best and most honest life. I would like to take a minute to talk to you about the sponsor for this episode, Anchor. Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast. It is free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. And Anchor distributes your podcast to every listening platform like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and much more without you doing a thing. You can also make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. I personally like to pre-record my episodes, type in the bios, place in the sponsorships, then schedule the episodes for a later date. It's easy, quick, and everything you will need to get your podcast rolling in one place. Download the Anchor app now or go to anchor.fm to get started. You won't regret it, I promise. Alrighty, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. I'm so excited to have you on here. And thank you for having me. Yeah, so it's kind of crazy. I was just talking to you about um, how I found One Year No Beer. It was, you know, in from a podcast from Zestology that I heard a couple years ago, and then kind of just merry-go-round found you again on another podcast when I really needed to um, hear about One Year No Beer again as a reminder that this is possible. And now I'm on my third time around on this challenge and I was like, all right, this is this is incredible. Um, I want to share this with all my listeners and everyone who's having an issue right now with alcohol, especially with the lockdown. So thank you once again. And um, why don't you introduce yourself to the audience? Yes, well, good to um, hear you, see you all guys <laughs> <laughs> out there, and thanks for having me on. Um, so, yeah, I'm Ruri, and I am co-founder and CEO of One Year No Beer. Um, I um, started off life as a, as a um, well, up on the west coast of Scotland, uh, pretty synonymous with drinking culture up there, and I think like many of us, um, I just watched aunties, uncles, friends, my parents, celebrate, commiserate, and congratulate with alcohol at every occasion. And um, so subconsciously into all of us, that was kind of feeding into my brain. Mm -hmm. And I um, um, sort of, I think the first time I ever got drunk, I was 12 years old, um, mixing whiskey and port Mm -hmm. together. Um, that was that was pretty horrendous. Uh, partied pretty hard. As, as a, I started my first business when I was 15. By the time I was 25, I'd tried five different enterprises. So I was a bit of a serial failpreneur, <laughs> I like to call myself. Um, and, you know, I partied very hard along with that, um, that hard work. I was never a problem drinker. Um, in fact, really, I didn't really think that alcohol was a problem. Um, rather randomly through the TV program, The Apprentice, which I uh, applied for in the UK and I got accepted and I didn't actually end up going on the show, but I became an oil broker in London. And for me, that's when two worlds collided, you know, partying and being successful. The more I partied, the more successful mm-hmm. I was. Um, so it really gave me a license to be, um, to be drinking more often. But once again, I never really thought I had a problem. 
you know, um, my my work colleagues, the other brokers, would say that I was uh, a lightweight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but it was just prevalent. You know, I could easily be doing two or three lunches a week, and and some of those lunches could be quite heavy drinking, and then maybe do you know uh, an evening or a, a, you know night out at the weekend with friends. So. Um, one day, and you know, it, it, it had its teething issues. You know, I was I'd be skipping the train sometimes to come home, and my wife would be like, "God damn it, mm-hmm. where are you?" Um, and um, um, and things like that. But I still didn't think that alcohol was a problem. It was just normal and very much normalised. Um, now, rather randomly, in two thousand and thirteen, I got introduced to this thing called Headspace, yep. which I'm sure everybody's heard of now. Uh, but back then, not many people had heard of it. Um, and back then it was Andy Puddicombe in all of the mm-hmm. videos. Devilishly handsome chap he is too. Oh, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. and, <laughs> and I actually, I do Headspace. And... I've, been, um, I've been on Headspace since, I think, wow, 2015, 2016, and I love it. And uh, I listened yeah, to his amazing. journey on um, how I built this. So he's uh, very interesting. Yeah, what a guy. I know. Amazing. Actually, I need to listen to that. It's great. I need to, I need to listen to that. I will. I love how I built this. Um, so, um, yeah, I've got a new app for you, which I've just downloaded. It's called... Nope, it'll come back to me. And I can't flip off my thing because I'm recording. That's okay. <laughs> but I could link it. it into the episode. It's amazing. Mm, it's um, aud- 3D audio meditation wow. using binaural sounds. Um, 1,500 scientists and researchers, 30 years of research... Um, and I, I just did a couple of them now and I was like, whoa, mind blown. Anyway, awesome. I'll find the name for you. Yeah, it is amazing, amazing noises and sounds. Coming back to this, so I started meditating on the train and this meditation, this mindfulness started me, hmm, I think alcohol is causing me more trouble than I realize. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, I started to gnaw away at me a little bit. I was like, hmm, you know, I think, I think this is now. Of course, there were all these little niggling things in my life, whatever they were. You know, um, since six years old, I'd been in counselling, ADHD, mm-hmm. you know, pretty crazy head. Um, I'd struggled with my head a lot. I'd struggled with depression. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, you know, uh, so I approached my boss and I said, look, I'm thinking about taking a break from booze. And I'd built a very successful business for the for the, for the company and they were worried about losing it in a way. And they said, look, if you, if you stop drinking, you're committing commercial suicide. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was huge peer pressure. Um, and it took me six months to pluck up the courage. And then eventually I took the courage and I, and, and I took a break and I was just blown away. You know, I got fitter, faster, healthier, yeah. happier. I was a better dad. I was a better husband. It was just the clarity. I was better at my job. I, I you know, increased our revenue significantly, 50% in the first year. And I reduced our cost by 30%. I was like, imagine imagine those numbers across the board, Yeah, that's right? incredible. And um yeah, it was phenomenal change. And and the thing was, no area of my life was untouched. Mm-hmm. Everything was, was, was positively impact impacted. And I was like, this is this is the complete opposite of what I thought it would be to take a break from booze. Like I thought it would be, you know, social hermit, nobody's gonna love you anymore, your wife's not gonna love you, you're gonna be boring, you're gonna lose your edge as a top broker, you know. That's what all the perception of not drinking mm-hmm. was. And it's funny how that was destroyed when I actually took the challenge myself. So I got together with Andy. Um, we both brokers in the same firm and we said, look, there's something huge here. He'd just done six months alcohol free. And we said, there's something people don't realize is that all the benefits of taking a break from booze. So we started meeting in a, in a, in a hotel quietly on Tuesday nights, coming up with an idea, a scribbling on walls and... Um, um, you know, this great, this hotel in Hoxton, whatever, gave us their conference room for free because we told them what we were trying to awesome. do. We were trying to change the world's relationship with alcohol. So, yeah, we would just meet in there and um, whiteboard all this stuff out. And, yeah, that's where we came up with the idea. It's got to be a challenge. It's got to be something that you can be proud of and stand up and say, yes, I'm doing this challenge. Like, not this, like, shying away of stigmatize, stigmatize and everything mm-hmm. else. And so that's where we... We launched One Year No Beer back in 2016. Wow. Yes. Yeah, and I, that's pretty much right around when I found you, I guess. Actually, no, I found you probably a year or two later. Um, I think it was 2017 when I listened to the podcast, mm-hmm. um, I believe. And 
I mean, I was, I had a similar journey getting started with alcohol. I was like, I mean, I taste, I'm Spanish and Italian. Um, so I've tried alcohol, like when I was young, you know, just like sipping sangria, sneaking it when my parents weren't looking at like holiday parties. And then, um, but in high school, I, my whole town, we kind of started, all my friends, we started drinking pretty young, like, um, right like eighth grade freshman year of high school and it started as something that was very innocent and then as we got older it got turned into those weekends of binge drinking and that transitioned into college of binge drink binge drinking because I went to a quote-unquote party school um but as an engineer of course you can't really party every second if you want to do well um so I was I was not like a huge partier but at the same time I what did go I did binge drink every weekend practically um and there were weeks sure there were like times when out of the month that I would take like a week off from drinking but every time I went back to drinking it was a binge so when I heard your podcast I was like wow this is like this is a breath of fresh air but I didn't have the confidence to go through with it when I um first when I first heard it, because I was in my senior year of college, I was like, you know, I want to have fun and whatever. And then when I moved to Washington, Missouri, I was like, all right, this is my time. I'm going to stop drinking. I have no reason to. I want to get healthy now that I'm done with college and I'm starting my new job. But of course, I'm a sales engineer. So as sales engineers, you I mean, that's kind of, it's not part of, I mean, entertaining is part of the job. So with entertaining, there's yep. alcohol, of course, as you know, with your job. Um, so it was like I couldn't escape it. And then finally, last year in April, when I was going through a health journey from recovering from an eating disorder that I had, it wasn't like anorexia or anything. It was um, orthorexia. So just obsessed with being healthy that negatively impacted my health overall. It was kind of just like a, you know, when you're obsessed with something so much, it you get it's bad cool. yeah exactly you get the bad consequences they reckon they reckon 70 percent of women have, oh yeah at some point had an eating disorder exactly so i was like all right <laughs> i'm healing this relationship now it's time to heal my alcohol relationship and i finally had the confidence since i was going through my eating disorder recovery and i had confidence in what i was doing in that part that i had figured, well, if I have confidence in this journey, why can't I have confidence in my alcohol journey? Because Mm. I wanted to get to a point, just like as you're saying, um, you know, not that I will never drink again, but when I drink, it doesn't have to be, and I'm I'm a lightweight, (laughs) I get tipsy easily. And that was one of the issues in college, I would black out and it was horrible. It Mm. was, would cause anxiety and stress. And then I'd be depressed the next day. So I was like, I don't want that. I want to be able to go to dinner and just have one glass of wine and that be it. And if people want to continue drinking around me, I'd be okay with that. Um, And it's been an extraordinary experience just starting one year no beer. Last May, when I first moved to Atlanta, Georgia, I moved with my, um, my boyfriend and I both moved in together for the first time. So it was a transition for that. Um, And I got to day 43 before it was our anniversary. And I was like, oh, I'll have a glass of wine. And I figured it would just be okay, just one glass of wine. But that transitioned into, oh, we have a wedding next week. And let me let me drink for that too. I'll, you know, it's okay. I just won't finish the challenge. And then I, um, restarted the challenge in, um, January. I'm like, all right, I'm going to do this again. And then we had people over, we moved to Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, my boyfriend and I, this is our second apartment together. And I moved for work again and we had our first get together and I was like, all right, I'm not going to drink, not going to drink in my head. And then I was like, you know what? Maybe I will just have one drink. And then it transitioned into five drinks. And I was like, okay, clearly I'm not ready. And I was on day like 40 something again. And I'm like, all right, no, this time I'm for real. And actually, because of the coronavirus going on, it made it so no, I'm on day 54 now. And yeah, so I've passed my old set points and it's like, I'm by myself here now with my boyfriend and no one is pressuring me to drink. So if I drink, that is all on me. So that's given me more motivation to go forward. 
Um, mm. And one thing I absolutely love about your program, so you give you the, the, um, the emails every day with motivation and um, what to do with eat, or uh, I'll let you explain that, really how it's set up, but um, the Facebook group that's also involved, someone posted on the Facebook group um, this long story about like things about the coronavirus and um, what they're going through. And then the end, and it was really nice, like reading what they were going through. And then at the end, they were like, but regardless of what's going on, I know that if I can get through this pandemic without drinking alcohol and being alcohol free, then I can do anything alcohol free. And once I read yeah. that, I was like, oh, yeah, I need to, there's no way I'm stopping. Yeah. That, absolutely. Yeah. So this has been something very, very amazing for me to go on um, to continue during this transition or this time in our in the world. Um, it's really helping well me get to know myself more. Um, so I think that I really wanted to post this, have this episode um, launch while this is still going on to help people that are turning to alcohol. Completely. I mean. Like you said there, you know, there really has never been a better time mm -hmm. to change your relationship with alcohol. So one of the big things is, you know, l listening, listening to this podcast, um, and I think many people, what we have to first understand is that if the no expression of a doubt, if no expression of doubt has started in your mind yet. Mm -hmm. So if you're listening to this podcast and you're going, why would I ever not drink? Like, I'm at home now. Mm -hmm. I want to drink more. Yep. Right? It's, it's, this is the yummy stuff. I can start gin and tonics at two o'clock. And this is where many, many people are. And, um, you know, they're, they're getting on and they're having wine clubs and Zoom calls with wine. Mm -hmm. and they are in the matrix. You're, the, if, you're, if that is you, you are in the matrix. Mm -hmm. And no amount of me standing saying, you're in the matrix, is going to make you realize you're in the matrix. Because the only way that Neo realizes he's in the matrix is when he takes the pill and sees the other side and then he is never the same again. Yep. And that's exactly the same as this, right? Yes. So if you, if you, if you, let's just park the assumption right now that you have no idea what you are missing out on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You've no idea what it is to feel yourself not drinking and feeling the clarity and the energy and, oh my God, I feel so much better if you are still in the matrix. Yes. So if we go along with that bit, first of all, the second part is that, um, you know, alcohol, like any drug, really begets itself. So um, as a coping mechanism, it's one of the worst possible things you could use to cope. I'm feeling anxious. Okay, so I'm going to take a substance that increases anxiety. Yep. Because yes, it does. It's a depressant. It fosters that anxiety and depression. So you are making yourself feel worse. But I feel better at the time. I get a high. Yes, but it's days afterwards. It's not like, it's not like the short high you get for a few hours of giggling in the evening. Mm -hmm. It's days afterwards of feeling more anxious, of feeling of a lower level. That's the depressant uh, effects of alcohol. Um, so, you know, with all this anxiety, the extra anxiety going on in the world, the extra fear... Why would you want to add a drug that exacerbates that in? So I think that's the biggest thing is, it, first of all, you've no idea what impact taking a break from booze is going to have. Oh, you. Yeah. I absolutely promise you it'll have a massive impact. We know because we've helped 80,000 people mm -hmm. in 90 countries to have that huge transformation. Um, and the second part is that is realizing right now that, that not only is this a really poor coping mechanism, is that it's making you need to cope more. Mm -hmm. But I need it to cope. Well, it is the alcohol that's making you need it to cope. Yep. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you need to cope? <laughs> because when I feel like I need to cope, I'll meditate. Exactly. Or exercise. Exactly. Or eat something right. Or go for a walk. And it's about these healthy habits. Because when you start to understand what is, what is my brain really craving, what is it I really need that I'm using a drug to try and shortcut, when I actually apply that principle, that's mm -hmm. when I get the transformation. So you asked about the program and just to go into a bit of detail is that 
as you said, it's just a challenge. We wanted to keep it nice and light and easy, but while they're doing the challenge, we're teaching people the healthy habits that they need to reach what they're actually trying to get. Teaching people meditation, exercise, diet, thinking about alcohol differently, starting to realize and get awareness of the habit. It's just habit, it's just habit. If you're somebody who's drinking a lot, we've helped literally thousands of people who drink a lot to remove alcohol almost entirely, become completely alcohol free, or just get into a more space of control. Mm -hmm. So I still drink. I did two years alcohol free and now I drink as much as I want whenever I want. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what a period of abstinence puts you into the driving seat of your relationship with alcohol. You get to see it for what it is and then you're more in control. You're like, nah, I don't really want to do that because I don't want to feel crappy for three yep. or four days afterwards. That's kind of how it all works. Yeah. Um, and yeah. it's um, it's very motivational too. all the um, the emails that you have every day, the videos that you have and how it's I love how it's broken up, too. So you have your sprints. Um, do you want to go into that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So um, everything is broken down just into two week sprints. Good old agile. Um, mm -hmm. But um, you've got a 28 day challenge, a 90 day challenge and a 365 day challenge. Um, the you get daily videos, daily emails. They're all making you think about your relationship with alcohol differently. They're making you start to get aware of what people say, mm -hmm. you know, and start to get start to get aware of just how endemic it is in our society. The expectations. Hey, uh, we should catch up sometime. Mm -hmm. <gasps> he's talking about alcohol. No, he's not talking about alcohol. But yes, the the expectation is there. But that doesn't mean you can't you can't meet them somewhere where there is alcohol. You just go and have an alcohol-free alternative. Exactly. And they don't really realize because you're drinking an alcohol-free beer uh, mm -hmm. and um, you move on nicely past it. And if you need to, you can stealth drink. And that's another other normal thing. So that that's kind of the pr process we walk people through. But I think by far and large, the most impactful thing for people um, is the community. Yes. So people just don't realize how subconscious community is. Our sense of belonging, our our need for status, mm -hmm. um, is is so primal that if, if almost everything we're doing, we're looking at going, is this going to raise my status in society or reduce my status in society? And choosing to not drink will so often feel like you are lowering your status mm -hmm. in society. Like, why would I do that? I can't do that. People wouldn't love me. I don't know how am I going to do my job. People won't want to me do sales with me mm -hmm. if I'm not, you know, etc. But the truth is that once you go through the journey, is it's total, it's absolute bollocks. It is. And one of the most important things, whenever you try and change your behaviour with something, is having a society, uh, having a uh, a community to belong to, a tribe to belong to, who is living how you want to live. And what happens is, is when you're at that high pressure moment, what's wrong with you? You're not having a drink, and you're at the sales conference, and you're like, oh, this is a guy whose business I've been trying to win for like six months, mm -hmm. ah! and you're feeling triggered. You just, your subconscious reaches back to the tribe that you belong to, yep. the messages that you read, the feeling of belonging that you feel there, mm -hmm. z zips back to you saying, it's okay, I feel belonging, don't worry, you're being triggered. Yeah, I know, but I've just got a really big thing to do tomorrow. I'm still going to have a bunch of alcohol-free beers with you. Hell, I'll even have a shot of water. Let's mm -hmm. get them in. Come on. Let's do it. <laughs> right? You know what I mean? But, but you just feel more confident and assured in your decision mm -hmm. when you would be much more easy to be bowled over by somebody giving you a bit of pressure. Exactly. But the great thing is right now, nobody's got that excuse. Yes. We have, we're all at home. Yes. It's a perfect time to start this, I think. And Just stop ordering it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Stop ordering it. And it's like when I am restarted in January, um, I knew it was going to be a little bit challenging for me because I had a our, my biggest sales expo of the year. And usually we have some type of gathering um, where you it's drinking involved. And I got through that whole thing without drinking. And it was great because that made me able to wake up in the morning without any hangover. And, because the previous year, um, it was my first time at the sales conference. And I didn't drink for like the first couple nights. And then I drank for the last couple nights. And I felt great the first couple days at the conference. It's all day on your feet. And um, I was working out in the morning. And then when I went out that one night till like midnight, I woke up and I always get hangovers. So I had a horrible hangover. I didn't feel peppy. I looked like crap. And, you know, I still did my job fine, but it was just like internally, I felt like I was rotting. And so this year, this time around, I didn't drink at all. 
I was up at like between five and I think some days it didn't start till later, but earliest I got up was five to work out when I had an earlier shift for the expo. But um, it was there every morning. I felt absolutely great. I had a great night's sleep and I was there with other people who were also in the same boat. And as the week went on, as I was one of the only ones left because I didn't drink, but there were a few other people and we had great conversations about things that went on the night before. We felt great throughout the day at the expo and it just proved to me that I didn't need to drink to have a great expo and to enjoy myself. Um, So that was my first time. Awesome. Yeah. That's amazing. Well done. Thank you. And it was just kind of like a great reminder that this is all on you. And so the first time I um, did the challenge, started the challenge in May of last year, I had it in my mind that, okay, I'm just going to get this 90 days over with so I can drink at so-and-so. That was my mindset. And that's a horrible mindset because it's like thinking that pretty much telling myself I'm going to fail, even if it is right after the event. I was like, oh, I'm just going to do 90 days and then and then I'll drink after. But it wasn't like, and yes, I wanted to improve my relationship, but I still wanted to drink as much as I was, if that makes sense. I didn't have it yeah. in my head that I wanted to change my life. And then this time around, I'm like, no, I am not putting an end date to this. I'm committing to the 90 day challenge because that's what I signed up for. But that is not my end date. And because I did mm. that, it has changed the whole experience. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's amazing. I love it. Um, And I think that that's when you start to say, "Hmm, oh, this is a process of Mm -hmm. self-discovery. I think, you know, exactly as we were saying that it's not linear um, changing your relationship with alcohol. Look, the the reality is that we are in the matrix, Mm -hmm. right? We are so programmed since, you know, knee high to a grasshopper you're just so programmed and all these neural pathways build up over time. So when we start back and in the teens, I mean, you're, you're, you're just a young thing. Mm -hmm. I remember back in my twenties, I definitely wasn't thinking about changing my relationship with alcohol. I was thinking about where could I get some more money so I can buy some more. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, um, So, um, but so, you know, we we start off in the early teens or whatever it was when we first start yep. drinking and it's like school pressure. Am I cool? Will yes. I fit in? The others are drinking. Being cool. That's okay, a, well, hang huge on a minute. part. <laughs> I, I need to be cool. I need to be cool. I need to fit in. This is really where I learn about tribes for the first time. Yep, I'll drink. Oh, yep. my God, that tastes disgusting. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you were like me, it was both ends. Yep. Um, and <laughs> me too. <laughs> you go to, oh, dear. We go to these same parties. And um, and then in your twenties, it, it can be become more about you know you can go to university. University is like the breeding ground of oh, alcohol yeah. problems, right? Jug, 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 yeah. jug. But then you've got rugby or sport. Then you've got could have military. All of these different areas where really it's like decompressing or the focus or this is where we have fun. Twenties, right? Fun, yep. dating. Date. How am I going to find? Oh, it's all of these associations in our brain. Now, the thing about this is brains are just phenomenal things, mm-hmm. right? They sh- want to shortcut pathways that are taken off them so that they're done on autopilot because it makes for much smoother moving. Imagine the brain had to wake up every day and think about how to put a sock on. Yes. Right? It would be exhausting. Mm-hmm. You'd be knackered by 9 a.m. Yeah. So, so instead, the brain puts everything into autopilot and off you go. Well, think about all of the times that drinking has been put onto autopilot. And that's just where it is. That's where it is for most people. Oh, time to relax. Booze. Oh, I'm stressed. Booze. Yep. Oh, it's fun. We're hanging out socially. Booze. Oh, it's a sunny day. Booze. Oh, I'm having a steak. Booze. Yes. Oh, I'm having pasta. Italian. White wine. Oh, we'll celebrate. Champagne. Right. Yep. But all of that is just the brain shortcutting. And all of that is just habit. And that's what I found myself doing in college, even. I was like, oh, I'm going to take a week off. Oh, but this is happening and this is happening. And I don't want to be the only one. And I don't want to seem like I'm not fun. And then it was drinking every weekend, you know, throughout the week because I was a senior. And it was just horrible. Yeah, absolutely. So what type of people um, do you normally see um, want to join your program then? Is it, do you have a range or is it most people? Well, the reality is... Mm -hmm. Yeah, the reality, I mean, there's a huge range of people yes. from, you know, um, uh, 18 year olds to 70 year olds, yep. uh, male, female, rich, poor, all over the world. We're in 90 countries. Mm-hmm. So there's a huge range. 
our marketing specifically works much better with those people who are 35 to 45, mm -hmm. um, ABC1, etc. So, of course, we focus on that. Therefore, we have more of those types. Mm -hmm. So you could say, but that's just because where um, the marketing is really focused. Um, but it is for anyone. Yes. At the moment, you know, the, the one of the big things is that we have one piece of content. So you get a daily email and it makes you think about stuff. But but what we're working on is is improving our technology because everybody's journey is different. Mm -hmm. So the first steps are, are to decouple content from the day. Everybody's day is different. Your day eight is different for John's day eight mm -hmm. if he was um, drinking lots or little or whatever it is. So people want to get a prompt and then get content that's relevant for them on that oh, day. Oh, that's maybe amazing. Or maybe it's anxiety. Or maybe I'm I'm feeling like I need to numb. Mm -hmm. Or maybe my I've had an argument with my partner. Or I'm worried about how am I ever going to have sex again if yep. I can't drink. Mm -hmm. Right? Whatever it is. So um, the couple the, the content is going to decouple from uh, um, from the days. Uh, the second um, piece is about customized journeys, and this is really important. Right? So Jess, who's at home and drinking three glasses of wine at home every day on her own doesn't want the same content, doesn't have the same mm -hmm. support journey as Ben who binge drinks 10 points and four shots at the weekend. Yep. So so those people need a, a bespoke journey and that's what we're working on at the moment is m dramatically improving how we how we give the right content to people at the right time, how we pick them up, what their journey is, etc. Yeah, and I love that because for me, like I didn't, I mean, I wasn't drinking by myself or anything like that. I mean, sure, there were some days like once, a couple times a month, maybe I had a glass of wine or something, but it was mostly just those social interactions and I really needed help with, okay, how can I gain the confidence to stick this out? But even with how it is now, it has helped me significantly. So I'm sure once you do that, it'll be even have even a greater effect more immediately. Yes, absolutely. Um, and it does. It, 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 it does have such a, an impact. And I think the thing that's amazing about you, you know, you're, you're challenging this for yourself at such an, a, a young age, mm -hmm. which is amazing and, and well done Thank to you. you. Um, um, because, you know, there, there is a coming tidal wave of paradigm shift happening with alcohol. Yes. Um, and I think this will be exacerbated by coronavirus. So we, we just launched and hopefully the podcast is out just as we still are running this. Mm -hmm. but, uh, we it should just launched be. our 20, great, our 28 day program for free. Uh, for anybody who is a key worker, health staff, anybody who's been unemployed or anybody who's just been affected by coronavirus. So basically anyone, mm -hmm. um, because we can't police that, yeah. um, who can sign up to the 28 day challenge for free. Um, so one of the big things with us is, um, you know, we're we're a, we're a business, mm -hmm. we're not a charity. Uh, we believe that we can have a much bigger impact on the world not being constrained by requiring handouts yes. um, and having to get fundraising. So we want to have a very big impact on the world in behavior change. So that's why we're a business. Now, um, we've gone through a couple of uh, funding rounds and we're lucky enough to just go through one, but still the team have all had to take a significant salary sacrifice. So mm -hmm. we've got 22 staff members. Everybody went down to 2,000 a month Yep. Um, as soon as coronavirus hit. And in the same hand... We've also offered our 28-day challenge to everybody for free. And that's normally £59, about 70 bucks, mm -hmm. or less than that now because the exchange rate. Um, so um, we really want to, to um, you know, help anybody right now. When we looked at the numbers, alcohol consumption is up 22% or 50 in the UK, 55% in the US in March alone. Um, the the horrible impacts of lots of that, like domestic violence, mm -hmm. suicide rates, uh, murder, all of these things are going through the roof. Mm -hmm. um, and so society is relying on alcohol as a coping mechanism. Now, I saw some stuff in the Boston Globe, I think it is, um, and um, some papers calling out for the US to ban alcohol, which South Africa has done. South mm -hmm. Africa has banned alcohol wow. and tobacco. Um, now... The, the 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 cost to the economy and yeah. the impact of people drinking heavily again will be significant. Mm -hmm. So I really think that there'll be a forced change around alcohol again as we come through or out of this in coronavirus. Yes. Um, and, um, you know, I well, I hope um, that's the situation because, you know, people really need to wake, be, not wake up. I think that's harsh. 
uh, because open their eyes. Been lied to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, th- I think they've been. I think they've been so lied to and yeah. programmed, and 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 you know the other part I know absolutely vehemently is that I will meet these people on the journey, and they're 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 typically like I was. Mm-hmm. So a perfect example is a friend. I'll call him Fred, mm-hmm. and Fred for two years would come to my house and get absolutely blitz. You know, mm-hmm. he, he he loved his booze. He would he, he no interest, not no interest in doing a program. I don't care, no interest. He would listen. He would listen, but no interest. And he was just like, no, I love it. I love going to the pub. I love being sociable. I love having friends around. I love having wine d- dinner uh, parties. I love it. Why would I? I just don't get it. Great. Still would hear my message. Still would hear my message. Anyway. Cut a long story short, this guy is now six months alcohol free. He's like, Rue, I'm never going to drink again. Great. I'm never, go- I'm never going to drink again. Yeah. And he was like, I just cannot believe how different my life is mm-hmm. now. I can't believe how different it could be. I never understood. If I'd known this before, I would have done it years yeah. ago. How many people have said that to me? And I'm like, oh. So what I need to do is instead of pissing around with marketing and all of this rubbish mm-hmm. that we have to do. I just need to invent a machine <laughs> which transports somebody 90 days ahead of yeah. where they are today after doing our program so that they can feel and be in that moment and go, <gasps> yes, I want that. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that that would be amazing. Some type of time machine. and uh, Time machine. Yeah. And Feeling I, machine. I love the... This is um, what you will feel like. Oh, yes. <laughs> every day. And I love the comparison you're making to The Matrix because first off, I that was my favorite childhood movie. I was obsessed awesome. with The Matrix. But second, <laughs> it's exactly... It's accurate. It's perfectly accurate. Yeah. And me... One, so one thing that I'm, I'm really big into is um, I love goal planning and I love planning things out and having goals and actionable and so it was kind of interesting the beginning of the year um so I'm paying off my student loans my goal for this year was you know what this is my year I'm gonna pay them off get debt free because I um you know calculated it out and it's feasible it's very feasible just takes discipline thank you um but then I was like oh well you know what yoga teacher training looks great. That'd be awesome to do in Charlotte, blah, blah, blah. And I ended up signing up for that. And then all, the coronavirus thing hit. Obviously, it's better to hang, hold on to money now more. And now that I'm um, not drinking too, that's another expense that I don't have to pay for. But I ended up canceling the yoga teacher training thing. I'm like, all right, no. my Since my mind is more, I swear this is because I'm not drinking anymore either. My mind is more clear. I'm like, why did I switch from my goal being paying off my student loans, being debt free to immediately two weeks later, signing up for yoga teacher training and planning all these things. (laughs) And then it took this virus, which is as sad as it is, it took this virus to open my eyes again to realize, no, like I'm going to go back to my original goal of being debt free. And the amazing thing is that I've already had the um, the time put into this program, but even if not, like starting right now would be perfectly fine too, that I don't have the expense from alcohol. I'm not planning on having the expense from alcohol. So now that end date of me being debt free is coming closer to me than before. And it's like, and it's crazy because I mean, the what's going on it, I mean, I'm fortunate right now, right today, that my job is secure. I don't know how it'll be next month or whatever, um, obviously, so everyone's trying to hold on to cash, but it's like, how much can I pay for my loans right now since I'm not paying for those extra things? Like, I'm not ordering cases of wine. I'm not ordering beer. I have all this money right now that I could use for my loans that I would have otherwise used for something else. So I think it's a great way to look at it that right now for those people who are unemployed, who are going through salary cuts, because I mean, I got a salary cuts, everyone, I mean, not everyone, but most people I know are getting some sort of salary cut or some type of change. And it's like, well, how can you change your spending habits now to make it so you don't feel as, um, as scared um and alcohol is the perfect thing to cut out right ah, now the amount of money on alcohol is ridiculous it's insane you know on average it's 400 quid a month mm-hmm. i mean who who doesn't want an extra 400 quid a month yeah 
And I really got into budgeting、um, last year. So I, I, every month I take, or every week, I do, it's a little easier.、Um, I will put down all my expenses from that week and I have them categorized. And in the beginning of the year, alcohol, we're going out, it was insane. And now I still、yeah. budget.、Um, so if the coronavirus weren't going on, I would still give myself a budget for going out, but it wouldn't be like it was before. It would be for like, you know, a, If I get a soda water, maybe I still want to give that bartender a tip because whatever. But it's like I'm saving so much more money that I could then use for exercise. I could then use for some books. I can then use yoga for teacher yoga teacher training. Exactly. <laughs> and it helps、Brilliant. me have like a clearer mind and I could prioritize better. And the anxiety piece, it's like, it's incredible. I'm a very anxious、yeah. person. So. I believe if I was going through this right now of being isolated and、um, not being by my family,、um, I'd be way more anxious、mm. and way more scared、totally. than I am now that I have my, my other tools. Like I get up, I meditate, I go for a walk, I do some journaling, I watch the video of the day for your program, and then I'm ready to start the day. And it's, it's、yeah. way better. Well done. Awesome. Textbook stuff.、Um, <laughs> you know, on the, on the financial thing, I, was, I,、um, I wrote this into my group this morning.、Mm -hmm. um, yesterday, we built a Spartan course whilst learning the five times table with my kids. Oh, nice.、Um, since I paid zero attention during school, I'm so pleased to finally know it. I'm joking. <laughs>、um, corona has forced me to ask myself lots of questions. Do I love working 12 to 16 hour days?、Mm -hmm. Do I love commuting and missing dinner or even bedtime? Do I love being with my kids all day? Would I rather be doing 16 hour days and avoiding them?、Mm -hmm. Depends on the day. Do I love homeschooling my kids? Hmm, not really. Do I love teaching them about life? Yes, every second of it. From tree types to bugs, nature, building things, destroying things, burning stuff, recording a podcast, how a camera works, joining my Zoom calls, which my kids interrupt me, <laughs> making a den with a sofa, climbing trees, winning at Monopoly, planting seeds, all of life's adventures. Do I love now actually working four to eight hour days and spending those other hours outside with my kids? Right now, I have no choice, but soon I will.、Mm -hmm. Do I want to go back to who I was, or am I different now? If I am different now, then who do I now want to be? These are some of the questions I'll be asking myself. Right now is not only a perfect and forced time to pivot our businesses, our lives, but most importantly, to pivot ourselves. Who do you want to be? So,、um, that is really something I was talking, thinking about myself today. You know, you're like, quite rightly, I don't know how long I'll have this job.、Mm -hmm. I'm lucky enough to have it right now. I have the security. It's most important for me to stay financially secure. So, budgeting is really key.、Mm -hmm. And also, actually, I'm in this process of thinking, well, this is not what I want to do forever. So, what is it? And how can I start going on a path towards that?、Mm -hmm. And you're already doing it because you are doing it in the perfect way. The perfect way to start doing what you really want to do is to start a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> because it's basically free. Exactly. You start building an audience, you give. You get to interview the people who are the experts in the field that you want to go into. You learn from them whilst doing the podcast. And then, guess what? Hey, presto, out comes your business、mm -hmm. from it once you've started to build an audience. Boom. Yes. And it's, <laughs> it's incredible. And I love what you wrote. That is beautiful. That's something I've been doing. Every day, too,、um, journaling and thinking, how do I want to change my life? Because I do a lot of traveling right now for work. And right now, I'm not traveling. And I love not traveling, but I'm going to have to travel、mm. again. And I keep、yes. thinking, well, how can I make my travel more enjoyable? How can I make it? Because I have to, you know? How can I make it so I don't think negatively each time I travel and better prepare myself? What types of changes can I ask for? And I think. Well, here's, here's another. I'm just going to challenge、mm -hmm. that because I think you just like you have to drink.、Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. I think the world, the world is now changed. Do you have to travel? Exactly. Because could, now that everyone's got used to Zoom meetings, we don't have to. And everyone in the world. Yes. So, can you now、mm -hmm. go from end to end without actually seeing the customer? So, the science actually shows. That the brain is triggered in a similar fashion if you are with the person in person and if you are、mm -hmm. on video call with them. 
Yeah. Isn't that interesting? It is. Even That's, talking okay, to you uh, right here, it seems like like I'm so into the conversation. It seems like we're together. Yeah, exactly. So I think a lot can be achieved. You know, we when I remember when all this stuff first came out because I'm that old. Um, you know, video conferencing was in its early days, and it was like, oh wow, you're going to be able to work anywhere in the world. But it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Still, we congregated in cities. Still, you needed people um, to be in. Uh, you know, into the office every single day. I think that's about to change. Yes. I think that. I think that. Corona, the biggest gift from coronavirus will be that the world is now completely flat um, and that you really can have a team sprawled all across the world yes. um, that work uh, well together. And I so, agree yeah, completely. Exciting days. And I'm hoping that one change... So I... Before the coronavirus happened, and for the past year, I've really noticed a trend in the amount of industries that see that people... There are people that are interested in being alcohol free and they're providing more options nowadays but it's in their definitely groups so when i first moved to charlotte um i signed up for i started going to yoga and i met this girl and her name is sarah and she we were talking and she was like you know what emily there's this thing called counterculture in charlotte and it's all about people who don't drink but it's not, it's for people from every, every spectrum, just like your program, but it's for a local group. They get together, they have events, really nice. So I signed up to awesome. go to one of the events. It was only like $5, um, just so you could, it could pay for um, some of the food they ha provide. And it ended up getting canceled, but I still follow them on Instagram. And it's like, I'm looking forward to being able to go to that. And yeah. it's crazy when you change your mindset too, and you, you see the little things that other people are doing and wanting and how they're wanting to be alcohol free too. And once you change your mindset and thinking that, you know, I can be like that too. And there are opportunities for me to still have a great, enjoyable life without feeling like I, I'm in this alone. Then you see all the opportunities. So do you have anything to yeah, speak completely. on that? Yeah, I think I think it's exactly that. You know, it's that that you start to. It's just like when you go and buy that car, and um, then all of a sudden you see the car absolutely everywhere. Yep. <laughs> and, oh yeah. Uh, or you see the word, and then you see it everywhere, and um, you know you, we were completely missing it before. So you know, going into that now, that's the new thing, and you want to be around those people. Fantastic, and I think it's so key to find people. Um, and, and be around people who are living how you want to live, especially if you want to make change. So finding something on a localized base. And Meetup is really good for that. Awesome. Uh, Meetup is really good for finding I'll check that um, out. sober events and, and things like that uh, in your town or your city. So if someone on this, and I'm hoping not just someone, multiple people are interested in your program or maybe they're yes. going through the alcohol journey, free journey right now, what's the biggest tip that you could give them right now to either get started or continue on maybe like someone like me uh, well I would say I mean if the podcast is coming out we're offering free right now yep. go right now and and come and pick up what is an amazing program that's transformed you know tens of thousands of lives all over the world mm -hmm. and, and I can vouch for, for that <laughs> at, at oneyearnobeer.com forward slash here for you um, oneyearnobeer.com forward slash here for you and that will be linked um, in the so show notes too Awesome. So you can um, hop in free and come and join the community. That would be the first thing to go and do. Um, you know, have a listen to our podcast. Again, that's more free resources. There's loads of inspiring guests and people who are choosing to be alcohol free and how awesome that is in this world today and how easy it is to do really when you know how. Mm -hmm. And then if you're going on the journey, you know, so I think reading the quit literature and, mm -hmm. and picking up some of the books even and picking up on the podcast and starting to immerse yourself in it that's where the process really starts to change especially if it's early in your journey like the first podcast you heard from me was two years ago yes. and and you you so your your brain was on a journey then you were starting to question and ask mm -hmm. and ask and ask and ask and then later the podcast came back so that process is the same for everyone tips for um really changing you know i think the biggest thing about our program is that it's about changing a relationship with alcohol. So anybody can abstain from something they love. What they do is they say, right, I'm going to do a 30 day challenge to not do mm -hmm. this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to avoid my social circle. I'm going to cancel seeing any of my friends. I'm going to live like a hermit. I'm going to count down the days till the first of the month. That I can get absolutely rat mm -hmm. again. Well, all that does is feed the limiting belief that alcohol is pertinent to your life. Because all of our drinking is psychological. 
So if we're going to change our relationship, we've got to work on the psychology. Yes. And so that's what our program really does. So I would, you know, if you want to change your relationship with alcohol in the fastest time possible, lots of people go, well, I don't want to not drink. Mm -hmm. I just want to drink less. Yep. I just want to be a bit in control. The fastest way you can control is to take a break. It, when you're sure. taking a break, I can speak to your brain. I can force those neural pathways to work in a different line. So when I, when I force you to go to the pub, yes, our program says go to the pub. How crazy is that? When I force you to go to the the pub and you go there and you're sorry not pub bar either way <laughs> it's fine you, <laughs> <laughs> you might not know what a pub is no um when i force you to go to the bar um and you're there and you're drinking alcohol free beers and you wake up the next day fresh and go for a run in the morning and then you hear your text message from other friends going oh god what did i do last mm -hmm. night or oh my god i don't know how you didn't drink last night you're like that was awesome. Yes. I feel amazing. Now, I can't buy you that feeling. Mm -hmm. I can't make you feel like that. I can't give you a pill that's going to make you feel like that. I can't t give you textbook. You can't read a book and feel like that. The only way you can feel like that is by doing it. Yes. And that's the whole point of the challenge. You need to go out there and experience alcohol free. And you need to go through the process of changing a relationship with alcohol. And when you do, Bosh. Mm -hmm. That's when you have the transformation. And one thing I've realized too, the past couple years of going through the multiple journeys I've gone through, um, is when you want to make a change and you deep down know it's right for you, you're the only one holding yourself back. And what you need to do is be confident in your decision and trust that this is right for you. And hold on to that confidence and write yeah. it out and do things partake in things you love and don't Commit. you know don't hide and tell people that you're doing this but you don't have to shove yeah. it in their face just be open and honest be ready for what they say but be confident that regardless of what they say and what they're doing you are doing the right thing for you 100 percent, absolutely love it Thank you. Um, so I only have a couple more questions for you because we're both on, you know, both have to get back to work. But um, the first one is because the main thing around this podcast is, um, I mean, my passion is health and wellness. And with One Year No Beer, that is, I mean, that's huge. It's all health. It's mental. It's physical. It brings you all of this. So um, what does health mean to you? And as a little side question to this, how does One Year No Beer, one year, no year, one year, no beer. Jeez, I cannot talk today. <laughs> How does that <laughs> help support you on this health journey? So the reality is um, one year, no beer is about a lot more than just alcohol. So we started with alcohol, but we're building a behavior change platform that helps you change habits with peer support. Um, so there's lots more to come from what we're doing. We're looking at sugar and caffeine and porn and gambling and all of mm -hmm. these kind of things down the track. And so what health means to me is if you remove something and feel better, then you are constantly improving your health. And it's, it's about that. And I think this kind of came from me doing FODMAP um, mm -hmm. when I was feeling IBS and things. I started, you know, r removing some things and going, oh, my God, I feel so much better. Then this is the journey of good health. This is the journey of trying to understand your own health through your own awareness of removing something like I can read and read and read and read, but until I've actually actioned it, that I don't know myself. So um, I think those are, those are, and, and for me, you know, understanding about the routines and the behaviors that make me mentally feel strong and physically feel good. Um, those are the, those are the key things for good health. Yeah. What was the second part of the question? How oh, can uh, how one year, year no beer? year get you there pretty much? Well, that's all, all of it, that is exactly what it is about. It is about exploring your health. Mm -hmm. um, alcohol is so often the gateway to most people's health. You don't realize it, but what you're doing is really numbing out. Mm -hmm. You're using a drug to numb out your life. You're stressed or relaxation or social anxiety. But yeah, but it's fun. I need to do it in the evening. But why do you need to take mm -hmm. a drug? And, and when you shut that door on alcohol, you open up the door for the rest of your health. And you see this all the time. People start looking at their diet. They start looking at what they're eating. They yep. start 
changing sugar, that well, actually I'm going to not drink coffee now. And you see it in the group a lot. So well, that's exactly what one year no beer is. It is the gateway to your better health. Yes. And I love that answer. And two things that you said in there that um, resonated with me. One thing about the FODMAPs and irritable bowel syndrome, because I've struggled with that. Um, I've had SIBO, which is directly linked practically. Um, and one thing I noticed is alcohol made it way worse. So, Much worse. And I thought that was the only alcohol problem. Alcohol usually makes everything worse. Yes. I mean, yeah. Th- this is the thing I forgot to say is, 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 uh, and we don't get too much into this. We try and stay on the positives because mm-hmm. everybody loves alcohol, yeah. right? But at the end of the day, Google what is alcohol? Yeah. It's a colorless, flammable, soluble liquid also used as a fuel mm-hmm. source known as ethanol. Yep. Okay. E- ethanol. Have there ever in the history of humankind been any studies that putting ethanol into the human body is good for you? No. <laughs> no. And there never, ever, well, ever, we- ever will be yeah. because that's why it's in a hardware store with skull and crossbones on, letting you know it's a poison. So that is what you are putting in your body. Mm -hmm. Nothing else, that is what you're putting in. Now, when people say, yeah, but there's health benefits, you can have two glasses of wine and the tannins and Mm -hmm. all these things. Yes, but you can get many thousand times more of those nutrients in a good diet. Yep, for sure. but, But the alcohol didn't fund those, the alcohol companies didn't fund those studies. So that is what is alcohol. Alcohol is ethanol and it's a poison, no questions. Mm -hmm. Second part is, why are you drinking? It's numbing. Mm -hmm. Now, as long as we just put those two together and you say, I'm trying to numb out of my life and I'm using a poison to do it, that's the actual fact. And we draw a line. It's the boring one because we can move on and say, okay, now that we know that, that's fine. But let's talk about the advantages. Let's talk about how you can actually be fitter. You're going to be faster. You're going to probably lose weight. You're going to feel more clarity, more energy, more productive. You're going to be calmer with your kids. For those people who say, oh, you know, I'm more fun with alcohol. My life's more fun. And it's like, well, why do you think that? Because you don't have the yeah. confidence to, in yourself. Agreed, hundred percent. And is it really fun the next day? No. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. So it's like once you have the confidence in yourself and uh, you think that you know I don't need alcohol to be fun. I'm fun myself. Like I'm fun without 100%. a drug. Then. Yeah. Then you. Can... I do not need alcohol to get semi naked and or naked and dance on bars. Exactly. Just saying. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Just do it. I love that. Um, so the last question that I have for you, and it's directly related to the name of my podcast, Honest Living. Um, how do you live honestly? And what this means is basically how do you live in line with your values and your purpose and stay honest with who you really are. Yeah, I loved this question when I saw it come across. And I think, you know, the, this this caveat of saying, well, it's not about being always honest because, you know, I lie to myself sometimes. Yeah, for I sure. Go, you know what? I, I've got the workout in the diary, but I can't be fucked today. Excuse my French. Mm-hmm, no, you're good. Um, so I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm not going to bother. So there's definitely some lies in it. But what is the absolute most important thing that I live and die by is that am I congruent and am I leading by example? Mm-hmm. And that is the most important thing for me is to be stepping up myself. And I've seen it, you know, I remember back in the day when I was looking at my relationship and I was standing at this woman going, I want you to change. Mm-hmm. You need to, you're, you're to this and you're to that and, and you're to this and you're to that. And it went on and on and on and on. And the day I went, hmm, I'm gonna start living that way myself. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then let's see what happens with you. Boom. That's when it all transformed. Yeah. So it's the focusing on yourself. It's always the focusing on yourself. Um, I've found out so much deeper into that is that actually the things that we see that upset us are a reflection of ourselves. Yes. And so and so it's actually it, it is the fact that it's annoying you is the fact that you need to work on it yourself. Mm-hmm. Ah, damn. How about that? How about that? Yeah. <laughs> How about having that shown up in lights? I love so, that. Yeah. To me, to me, it's about leading by example, mm-hmm. 100%. And one thing that I've learned during this journey is the alcohol-free it directly relates to what you're saying is that say I'm out and which I've gone, so I've only had one night of drinking this whole year so far and I've had multiple times I've gone out. Amazing. And so I could have just done the blip like you talk about in the program and continued on, but it was intentional and I drank a lot. So I'm like, I'm starting over. That was not a, you know, that was not just something that happened. It was intentional. <laughs> But anyways, it's like when I'm out and people 
people or say, why are you, why aren't you drinking? Before, when I did this, tried this program the first time, I would say, oh, you know, like I got really defensive. And now I just am confident and I say, oh, I, I really don't want to right now and whatever. And then if people continue to go on and like harass you about it or not harass, but you know what I mean? If they just continue <laughs> to bother you about it, the thing is, it's them reflecting on or projecting onto you because they know they have a bad relationship with alcohol and they are intimidated by you being confident that you can have fun and enjoy life and are confident your life will be better without alcohol, especially if you're the one who's really the life of the party without drinking. They'll be jealous. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well said. Thank well said. you. I mean, and we need to get you on the One Year No Beer podcast. <laughs> I would love to. Um, thank <laughs> you Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Um, this is something, I, it's kind of crazy. When I first started my podcast, this was in August, I wrote you down as someone I wanted on. And when you said you'd be on my oh, podcast, so I got so happy and I'm so grateful you're here. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, um, let's, let, I'll, I'll, let's definitely get you on ours. Awesome. Too, um, it sounds like you've had a great story. I would love to. So thank you so much for being here. And everyone who is listening, please go to one year beer, one year no beer, jeez, dot com, and um, is called here now slash here now. Here for you. Here for here you. Here for you. So one year no beer dot com is the website. Facebook uh, one year no beer. Instagram one year no beer. Podcast is up there on uh, under one year no beer on iTunes, Stitcher, all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. And if you want to sign up for free. It is oneyearnobeer.com forward slash here for you. Perfect. Thank you so much. And I'll talk to you Thanks, later. Thanks, Emily. All right. Cheers. Bye. Thanks for listening. And remember to tune in next week to continue learning how you can live your best and most honest life.